Hello, Martin here, and welcome to the third episode of Recreating Stockholm in the 1920s. Before we get started, I just want to show you a few things that I've changed from the last episode. Below Mosebacke, I've added the lower terrace and moved and replaced a few buildings. However, it's still a bit unclear to me what this area above Katarinevägen really looked like. Anyway, this should be a little closer, at least. Today we are going to cover the blocks around Maria Kyrkan, Maria Torget and Maria Berget and also create the first tram line, just to get some pretty trams going. This time I will introduce this new overview map to keep track of what's been built in each episode. I will update it and probably show it like this in the beginning of each episode. I hope that will make orientation a bit easier. Let's have a look at some old photos to get the feeling of what it looked like. This is behind what is now the city museum, Stadsmuseet. Maria Torget looks about the same today, but for example St. Paul's Gatan has changed quite a bit. The area north of Hornsgatan hasn't changed as much. Hornsgatan, of course, had its tram line. As I mentioned in the first episode, a few things are hard to achieve in City Skylines. It is designed to allow players to create modern cities. Therefore, the vehicles, the roads with all the signs, street lights and markings, and also the citizens are modeled after what they tend to look like today. However, most of these things can be changed via mods, as I have done, but it requires some work and here and there I've missed to replace, for example, the street lights with older ones. And if you know a lot about old cars, which I don't, you might have noticed that some of my car models are from the 30s rather than the 20s. Then we have the citizens, or the sims, as they are called. They cannot be changed as far as I know. So their clothing is not exactly typical for the 20s, and some guy is even walking around with a skateboard. And perhaps the most obvious error is the presence of the zebra painting at the crosswalks. I believe they were introduced in the 50s, but they cannot be easily removed in the game. There is a mod for it, but a bit surprisingly it seems to eat up a lot of memory, actually several gigabytes, so I haven't really been able to use it because my memory is running low as it is. But I'm planning to upgrade my computer, and if that goes well, I will give that mod a shot again. So, that's some of the most obvious anachronisms in the model. Another thing is that there aren't a lot of ships that match what ships used to look like. Sailing ships and steamboats. There aren't any assets in the game that resembles the local medium-sized passenger steamships from the time. Many of them remain in regular traffic until this day, like Norskär, Storskär, Blidesund and Marifred. They are fairly unique and an important part of Stockholm's cultural heritage. So, if you happen to be good at 3D modeling, please make these vessels and upload them to the workshop. Okay, that was the four quarters between Maria Kyrkan and Götgatan. Let's build a tram line now. You need to use a special building. 
During this series, I plan to add all the actual tram lines that existed at the time of this model. And here they come. Look at them go. Here I am creating the raised section of Hornsgatan between Bellmansgatan and Maria Torget. These kind of things are a bit tricky and rely on mods. The sims will still use the sidewalk beneath it, so they will walk through the ground and it will look a bit odd. Maria Torriot originates from the time of Queen Christina. Carl Michael Bellman grew up near here. It was called Hunstorget and was sometimes used for public executions. From 1768 until 1959 it was called Adolf Fredriks Torg. Wikipedia calls it a park. I don't know where the line should be drawn between a square and a park, but I would call it a square, I think. But sure, it's nicely decorated with fountains and trees, so why not? And as I said, it hasn't changed that much in a hundred years. Even the impressive sculpture group in the center by Anders Wissler depicting thunder god Thor catching the Midgård serpent is the same, it is from 1903.
Maria Berget has had settlements at least since the 14th century. The whole area from Riddafjärden down to Hornsgatan was destroyed in a great fire in 1759. Maria Kyrkan burned as well and the tower collapsed. Many of the buildings here today are built in the years after the fire and were built out of stone instead of wood. We often forget what a huge threat fires were back then and it is only thanks to centuries of hard-fought lessons and improved technology that we now are in a position where most of us no longer have to experience a raging city fire firsthand. The area is now classed as a cultural reserve and is regarded as an area with very high historical qualities.
Okay, that was everything for today. This was a bit easier to build than the two previous episodes, and I think it turned out okay. If you enjoyed this, you can thank me by giving this a like. And if you have any suggestions, questions or feedback, just leave a comment about it. If you don't want to miss when a new episode is out, hit the subscribe button and also click the little bell next to it to get a notification. Thank you for watching, take care and see you in the next one.